Welcome back, this is Dr. Jen Sung, where clinical excellence meets excellent results. Today we have a very important lecture on vitamin B9, folate or folic acid. Oftentimes folate and folic acid are used interchangeably, however they're not the same. So let's get right into some of the differences. Folate is a natural form found in green leafy vegetables, organ meats, yeast, avocados, and fish. It has several glutamate residues and is in the reduced form. Now, folic acid is synthetic. It has a monoglutamate attached to it, where this one has several. It's fully oxidized. In actuality, it's actually more stable than temperature and heat and so forth. So folic acid is actually more stable. It also has greater bioavailability by 1.7. So there is a measurement called a dietary folate equivalent. So like, I'll give you an example. 60 micrograms of folate, the natural form when taken, is equivalent to 60 micrograms of dietary folate equivalent. When you take fortified food that has folic acid, 60 milligrams, it's actually equivalent to 102 micrograms of dietary folate equivalent. So the bioavailability of folic acid is actually higher, okay? However, folate is converted to the active 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and it's done primarily in the GI tract and it's more efficiently converted where folic acid converts to the active form in the GI tract as well as the liver and other tissues. So this process of converting folic acid to the active form takes longer, up to 24 hours or longer in order to convert. So what happens? You get a buildup of folic acid in your system. So it's, the conversion process takes a while. So if you're eating fortified uh, cereal, you're eating bread and fortified processed foods and all this stuff, you're going to have an excess buildup of folic acid in your system, which has been shown to increase the risk of cancer. Now, if it increases the risk of cancer, I'm sure it's going to have problems in other tissues, right? All cells can be, have uh, issues or problems in replication and so forth. So that is why Folate, the natural form, is more preferable. Now, causes of deficiency. Usually it's things like alcoholism or increased alcohol intake because you're not taking in dietary folate. So low dietary intake, smoking, pregnancy, because pregnancy requires folate in order for cell replication and DNA replication. Also with cancer, inflammation, and uh, inflammatory bowel disease. So oftentimes people have Crohn's disease uh, or issues with their GI tract, they can't absorb. Also people who are taking antacids for long periods of time will get depleted in nutrients also. Okay, so what are some of the symptoms, right? Well, increased homocysteine. That's not really a symptom, but increased homocysteine is uh, increases your risk of cardiovascular disease, right? So it's important to understand that this right here, elevation of homocysteine, can increase heart attack and stroke. Also increases the risk of cancer. So here it is, MI, my, myocardial infarction, infarction and, and coronary uh, arterial disease. It also is associated with infertility, migraines, depression, decrease in neurotransmitters, Right? You need neurotransmitters to fire, your brain to function normally, right? depression, and so forth. Detox issues. And anemia. There's a type of anemia that B9, B12, and B6 can be associated with. Um, and anemia or fatigue is a clinical sign and symptom. Lab markers. We like to check homocysteine in the blood. And then we can also check MCV, or mean corpuscular volume, which can indicate when the, you have large uh, red blood cells, can indicate megaloblastic anemia. So MCV should be below 92, 
But when it climbs to 98, 99, or 102, then it could indicate you have megaloblastic anemia and fatigue can be an issue for that patient. So let's recap. Cell replication is very important. Amino acid synthesis, as well as DNA repair. If you just look at this, right, it's involved in everything, right? Now let's talk about genes. Genetic defects, we call methylene tetrahydrofolate reductase, MTHFR gene. So you can do common blood uh, test markers to look for this genetic defect. And there are two that you can check in your regular blood work. And this one is called C677T, and the other one is called A1298C. Okay, so there's something called heterozygous and homozygous. Heterozygous means you have one copy of it from one parent. Homozygous means you have two copies of the same gene from both parents, okay? So if you have this gene right here, and you're a hetero, meaning you have one copy, the efficiency or reduction of uh, efficiency will be 40%. And then if you're homozygous, if you have two copies, it's 75%. And then for this one, the heterogene has 20% reduction, and the homogene has 40% reduction. So it doesn't mean that every person has the exact percentage deficiency. It just means that you're genetically predisposed. So it can go up to those types of percentages. So if you're taking fortified foods and folic acid, and you're not really getting better, then you have to look and see if you're having issues with this ge genetic defect. And you might have to bypass that genetic defect by taking other types of supplements. Now, there are other genes. There are many genes associated with methylation. COMT SNPs, right? SUOX genes. You have uh, CBS genes. There's a lot of genes. I would encourage you, if you're interested in looking at other genetic defects, is to look at a book called Dirty Genes. And this book is written by Ben Lynch. It's an excellent book. Um, it's, it's readable for, for most common people to read, right, the lay people. So go ahead and purchase that book, and if you want to really understand some of the other genetic defects, read that book, all right? But this is the most common ones that we're talking about. Now, what do we prefer? Well, in mother's milk, folate is found, not folic acid. So we prefer folate, right, from foods, okay? If we're going to take it and we're going to supplement, you want to use methylfolate, or you can use L5 methyl tetrahydrofolate, and this will bypass some of the genetic defects, and it's more usable and bioavailable uh, in terms of getting to the next step, right, without the conversion from, let's say, folate or folic acid to the active form. Now, there are cofactors involved in this. We like to use vitamin C, vitamin E, riboflavin, P5P, which is B6, B12 in the form of methylcobalamin. You can use magnesium, choline, trimethylglycine, and MSM. These are things that, are, that donate methyl uh, donors uh, through this process. So methylation and B vitamin usage is very complicated, um, but what I'm trying to do is simplify it for you so it's understandable. So if you go into supplement, use one of these and use some of these cofactors. You eat green leafy vegetables, uh, fish and organ meats uh, and avocados uh, to improve the outcome. If you're using folic acid and you have a lot of fortified foods, I would look into how much folic acid you're actually taking in because like I said, it can build up in your system and cause problems. All right. So I hope that was helpful in understanding what B9 is, and we'll see you guys next week on the healthy side. Have an awesome day.